Holy freaking cow. Yo. Ladies and gentlemen, words can't describe how excited I'm feeling right now. This is a moment that I've been trying to capture for the longest time when I started taking photos of Jupiter. And tonight, I finally got a glimpse. You guys are in for a real treat tonight. It's the last weekend of the summer, and I have a clear night tonight. So I'm going to take full advantage of this opportunity to photograph another planet. Just like Saturn, this is a planet that I was able to photograph last year, and I'm hoping to make some new improvements on it this year. And even though we're exactly one month past its opposition, it's still bright enough in the sky to put on a great show. So come along for another astrophotography imaging session as I revisit the big man on the solar system campus, the planet Jupiter. My name is Koisi Aqua, and welcome to the Astro Park. Named after the Roman king of the gods, Jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun, as well as the largest planet in our solar system. It's a gas giant with the mass of two and a half times all of the planets in the solar system combined. Jupiter has a rapid rotation, completing one rotation on its axis in 10 hours. This rotation is responsible for the creation of the weather bands across its latitudes, with turbulence and storms occurring at the boundaries. One prominent storm is the Great Red Spot, which is known to have existed since at least the 17th century when it was first seen with a telescope. As of 2018, Jupiter has 79 confirmed moons, including the four large Galilean moons of Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, discovered by Galileo Galilei in 1610. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system, having a diameter greater than the planet Mercury. Several spacecrafts have visited Jupiter, such as the Pioneer and Voyager flyby missions in 1973 and 1979, respectively. The latest spacecraft to visit the planet is Juno, which has been in orbit since July of 2016. So to photograph Jupiter, I'll be using the Celestron Edge HD 9.25 a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. It has that long focal length and large aperture to help me get the best resolution possible. I'll also be using the ZWO ASI 224MC, a one shot color planetary webcam. And as usual, this will all be on top of the Orion Atlas Pro AZ EQG mount. And I'll also be using the Optolong UV IR cut filter to help with the sharpening and contrast details. So, with all that being said, let's go outside, take a walk in the park, and get everything set up for tonight's imaging session of the planet Jupiter. Okay, everybody, I just completed my polar alignment, star alignment, and focusing routines. 
So I'm inside of Fire Capture right now, working on my imaging session for the planet Jupiter. And tonight is going to be a really good night, because I can see some really good cloud band activity, and the Great Red Spot is also visible here. And it's probably a little bit dim for you to see, but right here is one of Jupiter's moons. This is Ganymede. And I also saw Europa near the rim right here. And it's going across the planet right here. So hopefully later this night, maybe around midnight or so, we'll, we're going to see something really cool. So stay tuned for that. But I want to take some time to go over some of the controls for fire capture to help you get your best images possible. So the first thing you want to do is maximize your FPS. That's your frames per second for your camera. And you do that by adjusting the gain level and the exposure time in the control section here. So with the gain, the higher the gain, the brighter the image you'll get. But you have to keep in mind that with the bright image, you'll also introduce some noise. So you want to have it as bright as possible, but air a little bit to the dimmer side and then adjust your exposure time accordingly to get your maximum FPS for your camera. Because with planetary imaging, the videos that we take are rather short, about two minutes, sometimes less, and you want to get as many frames recorded in that allotted time frame, and that way we can select the ones with the best scene conditions and then stack those to get the best image. And another thing you want to pay attention to is your histogram. So when you adjust the gain and your exposure, the histogram levels will change here. So ideally you want to keep it between 50 to 70% across all three channels, red, green, and blue, if you can. And a new feature I'm trying tonight is called the auto run procedure. So you can select the number of runs that you want to do for each video and choose the time limit and it'll just go through and record each video. So right now I'm doing a run of 10, so I'm doing 10 videos at 90 seconds each and I put a 5 second delay in between for buffering. So it will record a 90 second video, wait 5 seconds, and then record the next video. So this is ideal because you don't want to sit in front of your laptop and look at the screen and decide when the best scene is to hit record. You can just have Fire Capture run it for you, and somewhere in this time frame, you should get some pockets of good scene conditions. So yeah, apart from that, I think everything's going well tonight. So I'm going to continue with my auto runs and see how the night progresses. Hey everybody, so I just completed my first auto run and I did a refocus as well as tweaked my atmospheric dispersion corrector. So now I'm working on another auto run for 10 videos at 90 seconds each. So I want to take a moment to talk more about the importance of the scene conditions and why it's so important for planetary astrophotography. Imagine yourself looking down at the bottom of a swimming pool. If the water is nice and still, you can see straight down to the bottom, right? Now, if people are swimming in the pool or somebody throws a rock into the water, it creates that ripple effect and you can't see clearly to the bottom anymore. The same thing is happening in our atmosphere right now. From our point of view, it might seem like it's static, but our atmosphere is very dynamic. There's multiple layers that are swirling around at turbulent speeds. And this is what's referred to as the astronomical seeing conditions. So there's two tools that I use to plan my 
imaging sessions for planetary astrophotography in terms of the seeing conditions. One website is called Medio Blue. So it tells you the seeing conditions for any given night and it shows the levels hour by hour. And it also shows the cloud conditions as well as the jet stream, which is very useful. And the second website I use is called Astrospheric. And it also shows the cloud conditions and the seeing conditions. But it also shows the transparency levels, which is important for deep space astrophotography. So if you're looking for two tools to help you with planning your imaging sessions for the seeing conditions, then I would recommend using Medio Blue and Astrospheric. And Astrospheric also came out with an app that you can download for your phone. It's available for both iOS and Android. All right, Otteron is going pretty good so far. It's 12.20 a.m. right now. And I think I might see the special event. I think it's right on the edge. right on the edge. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. Holy freaking cow. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, words can't describe how excited I'm feeling right now. This is a moment that I've been trying to capture for the longest time when I started taking photos of Jupiter. And tonight I finally got a glimpse. You guys are in for a real treat tonight. So it might not be visible for you guys but for me I can see two moons right here stacked on top of each other the top one is Io and the bottom one is Ganymede and Europa I explained earlier was right about here now it's somewhere on this side and as across the plane you can see a black dot right here where my cursor is That is Europa's shadow casted on Jupiter. So what does that mean? Well, when the moon casts a shadow on the Earth, it's a solar eclipse. So right now, in real time, you're witnessing a Jovian eclipse. So Europa is casting a shadow on Jupiter. So we are seeing an eclipse on another world. How cool is that? Gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh, I am so excited right now. This is the stuff. This is the reason why we do astrophotography. It's for moments like these that just... Oh man, I just, words can't describe how I'm feeling right now. I'm just so glad that I was finally able to capture this for the first time. Hey everybody. Tonight was an unforgettable night. This is probably the coolest imaging session I've had in quite some time now. Being able to see a shadow transit go across Jupiter was perhaps one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And I'm very excited to have been able to capture that. So during my session, I was able to capture 
a ton of video files over the course of three hours. So there's like a lot of gigabytes worth of data. And my goal for this session is to process each individual video and put those files together to create a planetary animation. Now this is something I haven't tried before, but once I get the hang of it, I'll show the result in a future video. But for now, I'm going to share two still images of the planet Jupiter at key particular moments. So thank you for watching Astro Park. Please enjoy these photos of Jupiter at the end of this video. And as always, until next time, take care and I wish you all clear skies. Thank mm -hmm. you.